Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. My name is Pastor Kristen Schmidt. It is wonderful to see everybody gathered here and also a warm welcome to anybody worshiping with us online. We feel blessed by your presence. Um, we had our second of our midweek meal and Advent studies this past Wednesday. We've had a different leader each time and they've been great. Uh, so I encourage you, I uh, invite you to come to our next two if you just sign up on the clipboard out there so we can make sure we have enough food. And again, those are from 6 to 7 p.m. and we're meeting down in the hall there. Um, and also, but we're, and actually go ahead and I'll let you advance the slide. Okay, so the, uh, the time to decide if you want to go or not is coming up. Our youth activity to the escape room and uh, desserts in Lafayette. Um, if you or kids you know want to go, let me know by the 18th, please. And next. Um, for our, so the blood drive this year, like it has been in the past, it's on the, it's called the long, it's the longest day of the year. And so this is a chance for us to help out others, um, either by donating blood and or by bringing treats for the donors. Um, you can sign up to give blood online and there's yet another clipboard to sign up to bring treats. Um, something really important is that during this time, our sanctuary will be open and there'll be some prayer materials there. That will be for the folks coming in and also for us. So if you just want some peace and quiet in the sanctuary, that is that will be should hopefully be a nice uh, quiet time for us. So please do utilize that. And um, heads up that we have two joint worship services coming up. Um, the first one will be on December 25th. Christmas Day, and the second, and that will be over at St. Peter's, and then the next one will be the following Sunday. We will be here at Faith, and we're doing a, the cookies and carol service. At 9 a.m. At 9 a.m., both of those. Yes, you get cookies, you got to come earlier. It's a trade-off. And we need people to bring cookies. Yes, and that's, yes, another, yes. If you bypass the other clipboards, use that one. <laughs> Many opportunities to bring treats. Yes. Okay. Um, and again, our, we're continuing to collect uh, food for local food pantries for our reverse advent calendar. Mm -hmm. Okay, other things that I want to let you uh, know about. Um, I did, oh, I wanted to say a huge, I've been getting lots of wonderful thank yous from folks uh, from the caroling. So thank you everybody who was a part of that. That was a really fun and neat opportunity. I've got some pictures. I'll be sharing, but big thank you, thank you to all who contributed to that. I did want to mention that. Um, okay. And I want to thank the carolers for coming to my home and singing Christmas carols. It was a wonderful treat. <coughs> You're very welcome, Mary. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. It was fun to sing with you. But yeah, thank you, everybody. And I see that's that's coming up. Yeah, I saved those for last. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, as as many of you know, um, it's, it's been a it's been a rough couple of weeks for our faith family. Um, we are continuing to pray uh, for the Downham and the Bowman families, um, and we are also praying for the Layman and the Johansson families. Ronnie entered eternal life um, very late last Sunday night, and Keith. Um, early on Wednesday morning. Um, Ronnie's service will be May 6th and Keith's will be this coming Saturday. The visitation is from 11 to 1 at Dundrum and they'll, then there'll be the service. Um, so I just think, you know, we are, are grieving and supporting each other and we're so glad for the hope of the resurrection for all of these. Um, but uh, my condolences to you all. And um, thank you for all the support you're giving your families. I see Karen waving at me. We also, is this about afterwards? Birthday fellowship? Go no, I'm just doing it with other prayers. I've okay. been praying for my niece, Sarah, and her baby. And I asked um, for some really special prayers today. Um, she's the one who lost her husband um, there before Thanksgiving. And today would be their anniversary. So if you would just give her some special prayers for her today, because it's a very hard that's the Sarah and baby in our prayers. Um, well, there's sort of event announcements. Um, we're having a delayed birthday 
celebration that's going to be down the hall and off to the right because uh, Lona and her family are having the Chapman reunion in the fellowship hall. So go to the room with the couches for a delayed birthday fellowship. Council will be meeting this coming Tuesday at 630. Um, thank you uh, for our new members joining us of Amanda and Karen. We appreciate that and certainly appreciate our ongoing folks of Greg and Margo, Jan and Jeremy. So thank you for that. Um, with my father's passing, I would like for people to write out a special memory that you have of him. Um, on the um, gun rooms website, I think before the 15th, you can actually post it on there and it will go into a book. If you don't make it by then, um, if you would, just write it out and give it to us on the 5th or the 6th of May when we have this celebration of life slash memorial service. Just something that, you know, it can be funny, it can be serious, um, just something special that you remember that by. And Amanda, is that the 15th of this month to get it? I think it's the 15th of this month. I see okay. that on Gundrum's and they put obituary it in the book, yeah. site that, you know, they, they'll make it into a, different things into a book, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank Karen you. and I were talking about that this morning. We were, I remember as a kid, one of those times when uh, they went caroling, and Ronnie had this special jar that he used when he was eating chili. And he got Pastor Ted to dip his finger in it and lit him up. The jalapeno <laughs> juice was a little on the strong side for Pastor Ted. Yeah, I do remember a lot of hee haw and all sorts of stuff. Just the little things. That Pastor Ted happened. should have known better than to trust him. <laughs> <laughs> that was just what good. it was. That was good. I imagine you'll have a lot of good ones. Oh, yeah. I notice um, we don't have any children to report what they chose for mm -hmm. their thing. Um, they have chose to do a fish farm for mm -hmm. about $50. And Kevin said he didn't have any fish down to uh, play for that. <laughs> <laughs> they outsmarted you. And they also, with any additional funds, because we had like 65 or so, they're going to do $10 healthy child visits. Right. And right. however much they have beyond the 50 will be that many <coughs> child visits they can do. Yeah, and with, yeah, thank you. And thanks, Katrina, for counting. Yes, yeah, so the Children's Church, they picked um, the fish farm, a share of a fish farm, and then also health clinic visits. And of course, when, when other people donated as well, so then that's be more fish farm and more health clinic visits. But very, very cool use of those funds. All right, well, let's quiet our minds and hearts and begin our worship together. you to stand as you are able. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your past. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. 
You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace we may walk in your way through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The prophet describes the return from the Babylonian captivity as a joyous procession to Zion. God's coming reign will bring a renewal of creation in which health and wholeness will be restored. There is no need for fear, for God is coming to save. Hear now the reading from Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with a terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is the 146th psalm, beginning with the fifth verse, which we will read responsibly. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who may have the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are out ground. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God will resign throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Our second reading comes from the fifth chapter of James, beginning with the seventh verse. In anticipation of the Lord's coming, Christians are called upon to cultivate patience rather than discontent. Hear now the reading from James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors, as an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
John the Baptist expects the Messiah to bring God's judgment upon the earth. From a prison cell, he wonders whether Jesus is the one who will do this. Jesus' response indicates that God's reign is indeed being fulfilled already through healing and restoration. And now our reading. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, well, as I begin the children's sermon, Sam, would you go and grab a candle lighter for me for our Advent wreath coming up? We'll kind of view this as a, a children of God sermon. So, everybody familiar with the game charades? Rings a bell? Yeah, okay. All right, where you say some clues and you try to you try to guess what uh, what the person is. So, if I said, all righty has glasses and plays the piano. Who might I be talking about? Yeah. Amanda. Amanda. Amanda, all the others. Yes, you can just sit down. Thank you. If I said uh, place funny sounds after the children's sermon, who might I be talking about? Kevin. Yeah. Kevin, yeah, exactly right. Um, let me see. Yeah, that, those would be the ones. Those. <laughs> What's that? After, not during. After that, that's all right. Hey, my, maybe I, I need a laugh track, Kevin. That's, I need to work that out with you. Um, if I said always forgets the barn for the kids and wears a stole, who might I be describing? <laughs> Myself. Okay, and so we kind of have that happening a little bit in our gospel today. We have all these clues where John is like, all right, is this the Messiah? And our clues are people being made well, being healed, people being brought back into their community, the poor being restored. So those are all those clues. And what, what do all those clues, who is that that we're describing, the person that does all those things? The answer to every children's sermon is always, Jesus, Jesus. It's also the answer when they are, you're going through, by the way, you're being ordained and they quiz you if you, this, same thing. So the, that's pretty much always the answer for all time. All right. Well, thank you very much. We don't have kids today to do the quarters. Um, so I will shift over to our Advent wreath here. And we get to light three candles today. And some of you may know that this week is, uh, is the joy week. We had peace and hope. So our Advent wreath prayer. Come now and set us free, O God, our Savior. Come, O Lord Jesus, reconcile all nations. And then after I get it lighted, we've got three verses of our song.
God our Father and Jesus the Christ. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Are you the one who is to come, the one we faithful Jews have been waiting for and wondering about for thousands of years, or should we continue waiting? There is so much in John's question. First, his deep faith. John had no doubt that God would keep God's promises and send a Messiah. It was a matter of when, not if. Not waiting not trusting God was not an option. The Messiah had either come or would come. Second, this question reveals how challenging it is even for people of deep faith. Now, if you remember, John had actually seen and baptized Jesus, and we know from his in the reaction to encountering Jesus at the, the River Jordan that he clearly recognized him as holy and worthy of worship. Yet even John wondered, could this man really be the anointed one? And as God's messenger and prophet, John was the one who would actually see the Christ he proclaimed. And he had to reconcile his expectations of the Savior with the reality. And as we hear in today's Augsburg commentary, he did not come bearing the axe or the winnowing fork that John had predicted. Instead, he began healing the sick, casting out demons, and spending a lot of time with the very people that many thought were part of the problem. And John does not, I mean, excuse me, Jesus does not give a yes or no answer to the questions that John's disciples ask on his behalf. He doesn't say whether he is the Messiah or not. Instead, as he often does, Jesus leads the way to further reflection. He says, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. These are all things predicted of the Messiah by earlier prophets, including Isaiah in today's first reading. And in Jesus' response, there's an invitation to look beyond our preconceptions, to take a deeper look for ourselves. Jesus is describing activities, healing and evangelizing that he does and that he taught his disciples to do. And when Jesus sent them out, he tells them to proclaim the good news as they go. He tells them to say, the kingdom of heaven has come near. That was just what he said and also what John the Baptist said before him. And we see in our passage today that John is now called to be a disciple rather than a messenger. And discipleship is a major theme in Matthew's gospel. That is going to be our, our main gospel for the coming year. And discipleship is how we are called to live in community with others and in the world. The kingdom of heaven coming near, those ministries that Jesus describes, they're all about people being restored to wholeness and full participation in their community. And that's whether they're excluded because of a physical or a social or an economic condition. And this happens throughout Jesus' ministry. After his resurrection, this continues through his church. The signs of the Messiah become the signs of his disciples and his church. They are our signs as Christ followers that we share with others. Within our time and place, for those of us who follow Jesus, the question is, how can we bring the kingdom of heaven near wherever we are? How can we be part of God's healing and restoration, and how are we signs of Christ for others? Now, throughout Scripture, you probably have noticed that before ministering to people, Jesus asked them what they want, and that's a good starting point for us, too, because often needs are so subjective. 
Um, for example, in our time, um, there are deaf people who see God's healing in cochlear implants. And there are also deaf people who have no interest in implants and feel whole just as they are. Healing is being free from a disease or a condition that causes us pain or impairment. And sometimes that healing doesn't change us, but it changes the circumstances around us so that our situation um, is no longer or an impairment or less of one. And for example, there is a concept that's called universal design. And what this means is that an environment or a product is created so that the greatest number of people possible can use it, regardless of whatever limitation that they might have. And you might <coughs> notice this, say for example, when you go to a doctor's checkup. When you go to the scale, there is a ramp and you're seated. So you can use that if you are fully able-bodied, if you require some assistance, or if you are in a wheelchair. You might also notice that when they seat you, the number is behind you, and they ask you if they want, you want to know your weight today. Same question for every person, but if you happen to be someone who's struggling with an eating disorder, that is helpful to you. And we can see how God uses our, our myriad creativity and, and different gifts to bring healing and restoration to others in all different ways. I really like what Professor Ronald Allen says. He says, God never gives up on offering the world opportunities to become more like the realm of heaven. Now, all these wonderful things that Jesus is describing about the kingdom of heaven coming near, all this healing and restoration, John is sitting in prison. And none of those things are affecting him directly. And he's done everything right, and he's still asking this question from jail. And we don't know if he thought this, but it would be very understandable if he thought that Jesus being Messiah would have had better results for him personally. And likely at some point in our lives, we've had similar thoughts and questions. If God is real, if God is good, then why is this so hard? Are things going to turn out okay? Well, in John's case, yes and no. Not right away, but in the long run. God doesn't ask us to do anything God wouldn't do or hasn't experienced. Do we dare have hope? Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? To wait is to be expected to look for something to happen. And if we aren't expecting something to happen, we aren't actually waiting. Our obstacles to faith are both not believing the good news and also not wanting to face the challenges a life of faith brings. And that's why proclaiming the goodness of the good news is so important. To give others faith and hope, we go and tell what we hear and see, how Jesus is bringing healing and wholeness in our lives and in our families. Notice that Jesus praises John as a prophet and doesn't criticize him for his question. Father Richard Rohr, who founded the Center for Action and Contemplation, says that life is about discovering the right questions more than having the right answers. That's because if we're asking questions, we're continuing to discern, we're continuing to seek God, and that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. When we ask questions, we open ourselves up to receiving new information, to seeing things in new ways, and being moved to action. In John the Baptist, we see truth strength not just because he proclaimed boldly and used strong words, not just because he was willing to be imprisoned and eventually die for his faith, but also because he was strong enough to ask hard questions and to vulnerably state his uncertainty. One of the ways that we participate in bringing the kingdom of heaven near, in healing and in restoration, is to come before God with our questions. If we're patient, we will come to greater understanding and greater faith. Likely our questions will remain, but 
In the midst of those questions, we will find ourselves embraced by God's peace, by God's hope, by God's joy, and by God's love. I invite you to stand as you are able for our hymn of the day. As children of God, we affirm that God, who is love, created all and called it good, that God is present with all creation, and that in darkness and in light, God is faithful. Therefore, we too seek to be faithful. That Jesus came to show us love with the human face, and that he taught justice and reconciliation. And suffered on our behalf, and that through his faithful example he embodies hope. Therefore, we choose to see people in jail justice, reconciliation, and hope. That the Holy Spirit guides and accompanies us, that this same Spirit offers wisdom and discernment, and that when we are open, the Spirit can help us find our way. Therefore, we seek. As we begin our prayers of intercession, I also invite our online worshipers to reach out to us with their prayers, and we'd be happy to lift them up on your behalf. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gifts of your Spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation and ELCA Global Mission. God, in your mercy, we are our prayer. Saving God, we rejoice that in your reign all creation is healed. May clean water flow in the wilderness where it is lacking, and may the resources necessary for life blossom abundantly for all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice. Bring healthy sustenance to food deserts and bless our reverse advent calendar food drive for local pantries. Guard all who protect and serve, especially Blaine, Daniel, and Tom, and help us pray for our enemies. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hearing God, healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry or illness, especially Elias, Jan, Julie, Glenda, Beth, Linda, Austin, 
Marklin, Marilyn, Steve, Lauren, Kara, Nicole, Sarah and her baby, Mark, Cliff, baby Waylon, Megan, Bryant, John, Julie, Wayne, Randy, Jeanette, Sharon, Fred, Judy, Chad, Tom, Loane, Brenda, David and Alice, Kim, Roger, Jane, and any who we name in our hearts. Strengthen and protect health care workers, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to keep others safe. God in your mercy. We are Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful of those for whom this season is challenging. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to be with the Hinkle family as Candace continues her last year of seminary. Sustain and guide them through the coming months. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Usher those who share the bounty of this meal with those who are homebound or hospitalized, especially Phyllis, Nancy, Marilyn, and Bud. Keep us mindful of their continued role in this community of faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, Mother of the Lord, and all the saints, that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have passed, especially Alan, Mary, Bill, Ronnie, Jean, and Pete and lead us to joyfully sing of your everlasting promises. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your Spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. our offering we give thanks for all who share their time and talents and treasure our online worshipers are invited to give through the church office website or facebook new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. 
And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God who has come to save you. Thank you. 
Stand as you are able and let us pray. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look on us.